Hello my little beauties, it's David Connolly here, the web developer extraordinaire and today I'm going to tell you why I've stopped using CAPTCHAs. CAPTCHAs are of course these things. We've all seen them on contact forms. You'll have a little puzzle to solve. Sometimes you have to identify characters. I mean look at these, these ones are horrendous I think. Sometimes you see something like this where it will say click on the traffic lights and they are actually pretty irritating. I'm not able to solve them all the time and lately they've became increasingly difficult and the bad news is that the spammers are winning. I mean look at this one here. <laughs> I don't even know if that's real but I have seen a few that are ridiculous. In any event Another thing that I've seen is websites where you can pay a very small fee and have access to software that will solve any capture that you can find on the web. So there is now software that can solve this stuff and like I said, the spammers are winning. Personally speaking, I have tried every type of capture imaginable at one point or another. I've used this a few times, I've used the, all of the stuff from Google, I've used this. I've also been at the receiving end of phone calls from customers saying how come I've got tons of spam messages. Even after I have installed the captures, I tried the Google, the invisible one, we've tried everything. None of it's working. None of it is working. So I think that it's time to declare failure with captures. Here's what the web developer extraordinaire is going to be doing. Now, first of all, Let's assume that you're building a contact us form, right? Well, if you happen to be someone who uses the Trongate framework, you're in luck because I have a module here called Simple Contact Form and it gets you started with this Simple Contact Us and this is going to allow you to gracefully process contact forms. Now you can see that this one's got what is the capital of France and um, that's a, an example of a sort of capture that I've made myself. It's incredibly simple. Believe it or not, my little what's the capital of France thing is actually quite effective. However, I think that it's time to get something a bit more effective than this. So here's the vibe. The first rule is that when you have a contact us form on a website, do not fire off an email as many people do and say, well, there you go. You send an email that says somebody filled out a contact us form. Even at the best of times, sending emails is not really a very reliable way of communicating. What you really need is an internal messaging system, similar to the one that I've got here, which is available free of charge on the Trongate module market. If you're watching this into the future, there's a really good chance that I've got a new one up. Maybe someone else has a better one up. I don't claim any copyright on this. Copy my stuff, it's absolutely fine. Launch your own modules, pretend you made them. I don't care, it's fine, you're very, very welcome. But here's the vibe. Don't send emails, use internal messages. That's going to give you a much more reliable delivery rate but it's also going to give you more control over what happens with the messages. Now, the system that I'm using, I'm going to call it the assumption of spam model. And here's how it's going to go. This page here is the contact page for Speed Coding Academy. This is what it looks like. Now, you may think that I'm being a little bit crude showing you all of these messages, but I'm telling you that these are all spam, even though I haven't gone in. I mean, look at them. They're just spam. They're all spam, right? Loads and loads of spam messages. Now, what I'm going to be doing is two things. First of all, when a message arrives with at least any commercial sites that I'm doing from now on, I'm going to have at least two folders. I'm actually going to have three folders. There's going to be an inbox, junk and archives. And by the way, let me show you what I have been doing and does not work. What I have been doing is I built a thing called blacklist and I would chuck in the person's name or email address separated by commas and I'd fill this out. 
and it's just a major inconvenience. It's slow, it's garbage, and it doesn't help. So I'm not going to be doing that. Now, when a message comes in, I am going to be giving that message seven days in my inbox. So the message is going to arrive, and there is seven days now for me to do something with that message. So let's take this one, for example. It's not convenient for me to go blacklist and fill out something like this. It's just not convenient and it doesn't work anyway. Now, if I go and view a message or if a message arrives and there's no action taken, in seven days time, that message will be moved to the junk folder. And when it goes to the junk folder, it's going to sit in the junk folder for 30 days and after 30 days, it's going to be automatically deleted. This is my new policy. Now, let's suppose a message comes in like this one. And this is a genuine message. Now, this is not a genuine message, but let's assume it was. Well, I'm going to have to do some kind of action. Now, this particular admin panel is incredibly simple. Maybe with some admin panels, it will be give the message a ranking or send a reply or some some action. Maybe it'll be something like a comment where you say, um, whatever, you know, this is somebody looking for info, whatever. But then I've, I've added a comment, so there's some type of action. And when I do some kind of action, I'm sending a message to the system that says this is not spam. So the vibe is, when messages arrive into the inbox, this is my own method moving forward. You're welcome to copy. I am going to be just working from an assumption of spam. No more captures. So that's, I said there was two things. That's the first element. The second element is going to be to use machine learning. Now, here's an example of a contact us form that I've made for a client. This is a real contact us form. And as you can see, there's no capture whatsoever. There's nothing like that. And as long as you enter a valid email address and a message of so many characters, it will say thanks for submitting a message. But what's going to happen is, as well as the assumption of spam model, model, there's going to be a little bit of machine learning that makes a decision. Is this spam or is this a genuine message? If the message, and then to be more accurate, if the name, email address, and message passes our little test, our machine learning test, it'll go into the inbox. If it fails, it'll go into the junk folder and it'll sit there for one month. The way that this works and the key to this thing working is you have to have a mechanism for positively identifying that this is a spam message. So for me, it's going to be the point when a message gets deleted. Either when it gets deleted automatically, having been in the junk box for 30 days, or manually deleted, because this is spam, you know? So when that happens, it gets added to the data set of spam messages. And we'll also have a data set of good messages. A little bit of machine learning, and I think that we can do this. And it might take a few months before the system is refined, before you can really tune it up, but I definitely think that this is doable. I'd also finish by just saying that I haven't actually made this thing yet. I'm just giving you theory, you know, and, and I'm pretty much running it past you to see what you think. If you think that this type of video is useful, where I just give you some ideas and thoughts about web development, then uh, give me a thumbs up. Tell the Google algo that this guy's saying something interesting. It would really help. But above all, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with me that CAPTCHAs have had their day? I think they have. I think they're just an irritation. I don't think they really work. And I think that we need something else. Also, to anyone who's thinking, well, let's use iris recognition or vein scanning technologies or something like that. Well, I don't know if that's such a good idea. I mean, I'm doing a website right now for a fabulous client in Africa. This client sells agricultural equipment to farmers in Africa. Now, I don't know too much about that part of the world, but I would speculate that the farmers probably don't nick around with eyeball scanners in their back pockets. So whatever we come up with, 
It has to be something that's accessible and ideally something that's free of charge. I think it's possible. I think it's going to require a wee bit of work. And if people agree with me, then maybe I'll build something. I don't know. Anyway, thanks once again for watching. I'll see you down the road.